All right, so the Social Media Awards. What a fantastic opportunity it is for uh, you know, artists and fans alike where they get to see their favorite artists. And social media for you is massive too. I mean, you, people follow you online. It's important to you, isn't it? It is. I feel like it's uh, one way to have a personal connection with your fans. Um, for me, I've always ran my own Twitter and Facebook. I felt like that was an essential part of doing like there was sincerity behind um, all those connections. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Carly, because I, I, I'm going to sit down here. I don't like Yay. you looking up at me. There you go. A little more comfortable now. Okay, yeah, so that's a great way for you to be able to connect with your fans. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, it's the fans that matter, you know. it's the one. They're the ones that drive you, the ones that make you get up out of bed every morning and make you do what you want to do. Exactly. Um, when I'm writing music, I'm thinking of two things. Um, one, what feels sincere and what is the type of music that I would want to listen to. And I feel like having that connection with the fans helps me kind of get in their heads and hearts as well and uh, helps me be a better writer. Absolutely. So, I mean, okay, call me maybe. You've, you, you've had this conversation, I don't know how many hundreds of times already, but we've got to touch on that. I mean, did that just totally trip you out? I mean, the, the, the popularity and the rapid rate in which people were, were singing it, and there's all these parodies now online on YouTube and everywhere. Does that trip you out? It was a very surreal experience. Um, I can remember first putting Call Me Maybe Out within Canada, and my hope for it was that it would crack the top 10 on iTunes there in my own country. And when I saw it, not only went to number one there, but in 37, 47 different countries, it, it blew my mind. Um, it's been the adventure of a lifetime. I don't think I'll ever forget this past year. Do you, like, you sit at home when you have downtime in your busy schedule, do you sit at home and do you kind of like look online? You know, I'm curious to see how many other parodies there are <laughs> of my song online today. Actually, my, my parents, my family have been really sweet about that. My mom always sends me like the latest and greatest comedy maybe parody. Um, and it's been cool to see just how diverse it gets. They'll, they'll be really kind of um, fun, flirty ones that are just a bit more lighthearted. And sure. then I've actually seen some, some covers that are done where it's actually like with harps and <laughs> orchestras. And you're just wow. thinking, wow, how many different souls this has touched. It's really incredible feeling. Absolutely right. And you've touched uh, a lot of souls out here in Singapore and indeed across Asia as well. You know, I can remember um, when I first ever got a chance at a starring role in a musical. I think that was the most excited experience of my of my teenage years. I got to play Sandy in Greece, and um, I remember I was I was the principal's daughter in high school, so I was a very very much a goody goody. I'd never um, done anything that Sandy does at the end where she wears high heels and smokes cigarettes and all those things. So I played the first version of Sandy quite perfectly, but when I had to become the rebellious, sexy version of Sandy, I was sort of like a duckling. I had no idea what to do. And I can remember <laughs> my family coming and just laughing hysterically at me, trying to walk around in heels and not knowing how to, how to manage myself. Um, and I would say that there was something fun about that. I, I would say to young girls everywhere, um, <laughs> a couple things. Number one, that it's important to not try to be anything outside yourself, um, to stick true to who you are. And when it comes to things that are a little adventurous and outside the box, to be brave and to try it because there's nothing more exciting about life than, than also getting to experiment. Obviously, you're here for the Social Star Awards. You're very influential on social media. You reply your own tweets and things like that. But social media is not always a really kind place. You get lots of encouragement but you also get lots of random haters right so what's been the most encouraging thing ever said to you online and how do you deal with all that negativity that comes your way i think that was a, actually a really good lesson i learned with canadian idol um that was sort of my first ever real taste at any sort of media exposure and you learn very quickly a couple things Number one, how important it is to define yourself as, as different compared to all the other contestants. And number two, that it's really important in this business to have um, what I like to call alligator skin. Listening to the judges every night at the end of a performance, you would get a lot of good things and you would get some critical things. And I think the difference is hearing what can be helpful advice and what is just plain mean. <laughs> and filtering those out and deciding, okay, this is something that can help me be a better performer, and this is something that I need to shield against because there's there's no useful uh, point in kind of investing in it. And I've learned that and carried that lesson over to, to everything that I do regarding the media. Um, I shelter myself as much as possible from going too far into that world, and I keep my focus on the music. And when I see positive things, I take it with a grain of salt just as much as I see the negative because I know it's it's just people's opinion and they're entitled to it. Learning about this business as I've gone along, I can see the downfalls of it. And I think 
the main goal for me is making great music and right up there next to it is also holding on to who I am as a person and not letting it get to my head. But I have a lot of great tools to help me with that. I have an amazing team um, who are more like friends than just coworkers. And I don't think they'd ever let me get too big headed. <laughs> so I'm lucky to have them. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Carly. P people work so hard to break through into the industry and you, you did a freaking stampede right through, hey, I just met you, you know? So, how is it like being Carly Rae Jepsen today? Can you ever have a bad day? I mean, you're having such an exciting time. Oh, well, thank you. It's, um, it's been incredible. I don't think I've ever worked so hard in my entire life. It is an incredible amount of work, but that being said, it's first and foremost my passion. So if it wasn't, it would be a very unbalanced life that I'm leading. But because of the fact that this is something that excites me and fires me up every morning, um, the lack of sleep and, and even the sacrifice of not getting to see my family and friends as often as I would like to, um, it becomes it becomes one that I'm willing to make. And luckily I have the type of people in my life who are willing to have Skype dates and phone calls with me. Um, and it keeps me fired up enough to kind of keep trucking and, and feeling very lucky that I'm in the position that I'm in. You know, with the amount of people uh, who are breaking through, um, you know, musical artists online and whatnot, uh, do you ever think about maybe looking at videos online, you think, wow, that guy or that girl has got an amazing voice or they're an amazing talent. Do you ever think about maybe collaborating with other YouTube artists? Um, I hadn't really up until now. I think that there is this little pay it forward feeling inside me that, that does feel like one day when I'm in the position to do so, it would be great to do what Justin did for me and acknowledge another artist for sure. But um, I definitely feel like that's a position that I have to earn first in order to be able to do that in the right way. Um, being signed to a label is an incredible thing and it's an incredible responsibility to be that label. So I'd, I'd need to be in a spot where I could really make sure that I could see the artists through and confidently ask them to come with me and know that I could uh, provide well for them.